In the computer lab today, what we're going to look at is how to get started using MATLAB. So we're going to have a quick look at what MATLAB looks like. I've already got it open on my screen. And a few important things to look at. Right here in the center of my screen is what's called the command window. Here is something that we can just use as a calculator. So if I define something, let's call it P equals 12, I can then go S equals 2 times T and then I get 20, S equals 24. What you might have noticed as I was typing that in, on the right hand side here we have something called the workspace. Any variables or stuff that I've typed in will get stored here in the workspace. So T has been stored and you can see the value of 12 there and S has been stored. Just below that we have something called the command history. So all commands that I've used in the past are stored there and there's lots of them because I've used MATLAB quite extensively in the past couple of weeks. And this is quite useful. So what you can do, use the up and down keys on your keyboard and it will remember stuff that you've already been typing in. Okay. And on this left hand side now we have what's in the current folder at the moment my current folder so this is the folder on your actual hard drive my current folder is empty we're going to do something different with that in a minute but before we go any further if you've got data in this workspace sometimes you might inadvertently use a value that's stored there that you don't want to so it's always a good idea to clear the workspace so type the command clear and the workspace is now empty. So if I type T, it says undefined function no longer exists in the mem in MATLAB's memory. Okay, so that's good news. And the other thing is this command window, you might find this again a little bit messy. So you might also want to use the command CLC, which clears the command window for you. And now we're back to a blank screen, but you can still remember any of the past commands that you've typed in. Okay, but what we're going to do now is instead of having to retype everything in, is we're going to put stuff in a script. Click this button here for a new script, and it says untitled number four. We can change that in a minute. What I like to do on the first line of any script, you use the percent sign, that means I can use a comment statement. And I'm going to say that this is intro.m, and I always find it useful to use the clear and CLC at the top of every script I ever write and just a habit that I've got is I'll put a line with some dashes so I can see where different parts of the script start and end so we're going to save this now save and it has to finish with .m that's the file extension that MATLAB uses you cannot use a number at the start of it, and I don't think you can use spaces either in the name of the script. So save. So I have a script there. All this is going to do is clear the memory and clear the command window, which isn't particularly interesting. So what I'm going to do with that is let's define ourselves an array. So the array I'm going to go for, and this is in the PDF for this section of work, A1 equals an array that starts at 1, colon, in steps of 2, colon, and a maximum value of 10. So I'm going to save that, so Control S on the keyboard, or actually use the save button there. Now we've got a choice, if we want to run this, we can click this green button, run. But I'm a bit old fashioned, I've been using MATLAB for far too long. I like to type this in at the command window, so I just type in the name of the script, intro, click enter, and it runs the script, and I have my array, which goes one, three, five, seven, nine. Now, when we're dealing with matrices and vectors, one of the things you, you'll have learned from your algebra lessons is, or your, your matrix and vector lessons in mathematics, is that you need the arrays to be of the right sizes to be able to perform multiplication exercises. 
So it's very useful if you can tell what size these are. You can see on the screen, there's also a command in MATLAB, especially when you get large arrays, where if you do size and then use the brackets and then tell it inside the bracket which array you'd like to know the size of, click enter and it tells you that it's a one by five. So one row by five columns. And I've not put that in the script. Um, now we're using with vectors and arrays. It's also really useful if you know how to do the transpose. So I'm going to set up an array A2, which equals the transpose of A1. And the, the thing for the transpose is the apostrophe. I'm going to save it and I'll click the green button for a change. And so it run A1, 13579, A2 is 13579, but in a column vector. So I can do the size command, and size of A2 now is five by one, so five rows and one column. Now print into the screen, especially when you've got a large program, A clutters up the command window, and B, it actually slows down your program. So if you use the semicolon at the end, and we'll run intro again. Now nothing has repeated to, to the command window, but we do have our arrays A1 and A2 in the workspace. Okay, so that's just a quick start. There's the full intro to MATLAB PDF that we want you to work through. So starting off with setting up A1, A2, doing some multiplication operations, and then inspecting subparts of arrays which will become really useful later with the direct stiffness method. And then there's an introduction to using some inbuilt functions. We've already just shown you the size function in MATLAB, but we're gonna show you the plot function. There are lots of other functions in MATLAB that help you do lots of scientific stuff without reinventing the wheel with every type of operation you need to do. So here's a plot function and you get to choose how thick the line is, what color the line is, etc., etc. And you can add X labels, Y labels and titles. So all of that markup stuff that you can do very quickly with the mouse in a spreadsheet program, but actually you can have a lot more control using a script where you can get every single graph you do to look identical every time which can actually get quite tricky when using a spreadsheet program so work your way through this sheet get comfortable using matlab and in following weeks we'll start using matlab in anger to program the direct stiffness method